Cloud. Wonderful. So I'm here today with Julie Richard and Isabel Bazzini. Um, and we're going to be talking about Suoni per il Popolo, uh, the, uh, the, the festival in Montreal. Um, and maybe just to, to start off, if, if maybe I'll go to, to Julie first, um, just to talk about how, how did you become involved with uh, Suoni per il Popolo and uh, what, uh, what, what you've been doing uh, with them? Oh, wow. So uh, it's, it's been a long uh, adventure between me and the festival. Like first, I think it's, uh, I got to be programmed in, in one of the first years of the festival as a musician. One of my first professional experience was to uh, play uh, Casa during the festival. Maybe, I don't know, 15, 18 years ago. I can't even remember. And then later on, um, they were looking for someone to take uh, care of uh, organizing a membership campaign and then I joined it was supposed to be a short contract maybe two months getting stuff organized the uh, planification and all and at the end I decided to be a volunteer to run it myself and uh, I believe eight years later I was still there um, I started working in the office helping out on the booking and then it went to a uh, social media uh, translation um, organizing with volunteers. I mean, we've always uh, sort of been multitasking all around with that festival because it was a really small team. I believe it is still a small team to this day. Um, and I've been performing throughout the years with different projects, doing different stuff, being offered opportunities, which I'm really grateful for. That's, uh, that sums it all. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, how about you, Isabel? Same question to you. How did you first become aware of Swanee Pro Popolo and, and what have you been doing uh, with them? Well, uh, I am not, I'm not sure because as Judy, it's sort of been always in my radar. Uh, I have to say I live just around Casa and, and Sala and uh, Kiva's place on, on the Clark. Uh, so it's, it's been, you know, that our kids went to the same school and then we've been a uh, acquainted and knowing each other and part of the same community since since ever somehow and then of course the musical community was also um having lots of what you say that relationships and and, and uh yeah you have a book the 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 shows qui se croisaient qu'on qu retrouvait ensemble right. so yeah so so i i i then i'm not so sure we did the first few gigs at casa it must have been 2008 i think and I'm not sure even if it was within within the the festival at that point. I know we did we did something with Joanne et Jean de Rome. Mensonge uh, et was a big piece at the time. I think that was our first gig there. And then we met Peter Burton, who was programming there for years and curating. And, and we started this relationship with him. And basically from 2011 or 12, I think, we were co-curating a, a, an experimental a music series with Peter and you know Carla Berta basically every year on, on some projects we would produce one they would produce one and we had a little series and guests and such as Edwin Lucy and then Christian Wolf from the Van Advisors and uh, Alison Cameron and, and so on over the years. Awesome great so yeah I mean and I, I used to live in Montreal myself too and just even being along that strip of Casa and Sala, it's impossible to avoid a certain point of year, you know, uh, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's coming out and everyone's interacting. Um, wonderful. Uh, yeah. And, and now here's, you know, w when I, I was going through um, Suoni Peril Popolo, going through it, sort of its, its, its manifesto and its, um, uh, its, its beliefs and, and how it all came to be. Um, La Société des, des Arts Libres Actuels, um, there was a, a message that said, uh, we're committed to presenting avant-garde and experimental music and sound within a community context. And I thought, you know, this is a good way of kind of describing what at least I, I, I see the, the festival to sit, it, where it's, it, there is experimentation, there's innovation, but also with this constant reminder of community. Uh, and maybe I'll go back to Julie, um, just in thinking about community context in terms of the festival, and maybe in terms of uh, music in general, um, what do you think community context means when, when building performance? Oh, wow. Okay, I'll try to stay focused. What do I think it means? I mean, uh, it, it's, 
I don't believe there's any other way that if you're gonna offer a a festival and somehow make it very um, focused on a public, uh, that would be extremely sad, you know? Uh, this place is um, at the crossroad of many different communities and uh, Somehow, if you want to be avant-garde or if you claim to be avant-garde, you need to be extremely rooted in the present and it can't avoid uh, the challenges that are present in your community. Uh, maybe for, it could be access. It could be um, some sort of elitism uh, shadows that goes around a certain festival or certain event. And uh, I've seen it deployed over the years in so many different ways. And it seems to never want to see it also. There's, it's part of the, we, I don't know if we, uh, we've named activists. I would say that the cultural aspect is almost like a community activism where um, each year is different, but I've seen free shows in the park, uh, trying not to forget that kids are also part of our communities. and. Uh, elders are also part of our communities and uh, you know we've been I've seen association with the Jewish hospital like outdoor free shows I've seen parks events I've seen place being given to different uh, fundraising charities uh, programming for youth because what would you be if you're not even trying to build a future and a future audience and to be trusting in the intelligence of, uh, of the youth is uh, it's a part of what they're doing as a community and it keeps moving and it keeps trying to target uh, who would benefit the most uh, from the programming, but also from the tools that the um, that this uh, community is able to offer uh, teachers, uh, inspiration, uh, new ways of using creativity that doesn't involve uh, a lot of financial resources. Um, I don't know if I'm going too far. I'm sure I'm forgetting about things, but that's a that's no. part of what I'm getting. Yeah. I, I fully agree with uh, with everything what, uh, as Julie has, has been putting it. It's the, there's a very obvious uh, community sense with Swanee and and I think I mean in some of the questions I was reading you were talking okay how is it now in 2022 but I think it's been in the in the uh, um, in the ADN the, the Swanee it's, it's it's been there since since the start the community thing and in terms of uh, also from the first question sorry now Kakalan but since it's going to be a piece of writing it's good mm -hmm. yeah yeah go ahead um, I, I, it, it, uh, it came to me that actually before I was actually available of the festival of, uh, of it, aware of, of the festival of Sony, uh, it was actually Casa which drew me in and Casa as I mean the first of all the name for me Casa Pit Popolo was wonderful and then the shows that that were going there since what was it late 90s or just very early 2000s it, it's it was crazy and it was every night and you, there's been so many important figures and then you know, young artists, but super exciting and, and, and discoveries that you could do there every single night for no price or, or, or not expensive. And I, I've spent, before having kids, I spent a lot of evenings at Casa del Popolo discovering all kinds of things. That was also the, the scope of it has, has been always so inclusive and, and interesting and uh, eclaté and, and going, you know, in every, uh, so, so many interesting uh voices have been heard in, in in those in those places that you know that's that's for me one of the very important things aside from the whole aspect which is community and inclusive and all of this wonderful thank you yeah thank you both um yeah there's there's so there's so many ways to think about community but uh yeah um let's maybe i'll talk about the the uh, the artists themselves uh and the, the programming a little bit um Quelque chose que, 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 que m'intéresse beaucoup quand je, 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 je vais dé découvrir les, les nouveaux artistes et um, comment est-ce qu'ils uh, s'identifient um, et uh, comment est-ce que les artistes utilisent les descripteurs de genre 
euh, pour s'identifier comme musicien. Ouais. Comme je regarde sur, sur le programme de Sony, et puis you know, beaucoup d'artistes, euh, ça, 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 ça dit euh, nouveau musique, rock, hip-hop, punk, n'importe quoi, mais il y a aussi plusieurs musiciens, euh, musiciens qui, qui n'utilisent pas les genres, mais c'est un différent euh, type de description. Alors, mon question est, um, est-ce que la, la pratique d'utiliser les genres est en train de changer? Est-ce est que vous... vous euh, oui, peut-être... Euh, ouais. je vais... <rire> Moi, j'espère. Moi, j'espère. Moi, c'est mon oui. souhait, personnellement. Je, je trouve que ça, ça a toujours été un... Euh, je pense que c'est une erreur, c'est une simplification pour... Je ne sais pas pour quoi et pour qui de, de devoir absolument mettre une étiquette sur les choses. Et, et je suis contente de voir que, justement, on, on, on en sort et, qu a, et que les, les, les esthétiques se, se croisent et qu'il y a de la pollinisation, qu'il y a de la, la, de la discussion, qu'il y a de l'ouverture aussi. Puis que, euh, oui, c'est la musique, c'est... C'est euh, imagé, il y a des choses à entendre, il y a, il y a des impressions. C'est plutôt que juste mettre un... OK, c'est ça. Euh, J'aime les mélanges. C'est sûr que, bon, il y a, il y a, il y a, des, il y a une limite à... À aller dans les extrêmes, mais euh, pour moi, c'est euh, positif. Je pense que les étiquettes, se, se... en tout cas, il y a de plus en plus de, de, de choses qui se combinent, et puis ça, c'est euh, une bonne chose, je pense, pour l'art pour le, en général, la musique en particulier. Merci. Ah, oui, Julie, ah, même chose. Ben, écoute, j'ai remarqué un peu la même chose, puis ça, fait un, ça, ça me fait un énorme plaisir. Je préfère, en fait, en même temps, euh, avoir accès à beaucoup plus de poésie quand je lis euh, sur euh, l'ensemble le, le, que je vais aller voir. Euh, je, je ne sais pas à quel point ça me parle encore et ça parle encore à plusieurs d'entre nous qui se posons justement des questions sur ces étiquettes-là. Euh, Qu'est-ce que c'est euh, une nouvelle musique? Combien de temps sera-tu dans l'émergence? Émergeons-nous un jour? <rire> um, euh, les nouvelles pratiques, le... Est-ce que faire de la musique contemporaine, c'est accessible à tous? Ça prend un certain degré de, 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 de connaissance et d'institutionnalisation. Excusez, j'ai de la misère à prononcer ce mot-là, c'est ah. terrible. Mais je, je pense qu'à quelque part, on commence à comprendre que les mots sont un obstacle à l'intégration. Puis, euh, je ne pense pas qu'on en est rendu à, à une finalité là-dessus, mais ça fait partie des débats des débats d'une société, des débats d'organismes de, culturels. Euh, puis on voit que les nouvelles générations ont tendance à trouver des descriptions qui sont beaucoup plus évocatrices euh, puis qui ressemblent plus à une description d'un de, verre de vin qu'à que une étiquette chez Archambault. Là. Puis on en bénéficie tous. Puis je pense que ça enlève des barrières au niveau de la consommation aussi, de se dire... Alors moi, je ne serais peut-être pas allée si on m'avait dit que c'était tel type de musique, mais là, plus qu'on me donne une idée de ce que je vais avoir, j'ai pris la chance d'y aller puis de m'ouvrir à autre chose. Non, tout à fait. C'est qu'il y a des termes, de toute façon, qui sont devenus galvaudés. Puis c'est euh, ça, ça, ça nous sort aussi des chapelles puis de, de tout ce qui peut comme refermer là, puis t'empêcher, te faire sentir que tu n'es pas à ta place euh, dans tel show, avec tel public, avec telle musique ou quoi. Euh, en fait, c'est ridicule tout ça. C'est vraiment une question. Euh, Qu'est-ce qu'on amène? Puis je pense que ça, ça, ça se traduit aussi dans les, ça se traduit dans les façons de présenter les musiques. Ça se traduit dans le travail des artistes et des compositeurs et des, des auteurs. Euh, on, 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 on sent que les, que, oui, les jeunes générations puis, puis Bon, ça dépend. Les... Il y a quelques-uns de la vieille génération qui sont devenus euh, plus populaires récemment. Les gens ne se, se laissent pas enfermer dans un, un cadre, puis c'est juste ça. Puis il faut que ça soit comme ça, sinon ce n'est euh, pas, euh, pas accepté justement par l'institution, on va dire ça, Julie. Merci beaucoup. Um, alors, uh, uh, avec uh, une autre question, un peu similaire, mais un peu différente, um, c'est à propos de la, la programmation. Swony a, a commencé en 2002, alors on est à 20 ans de, de cette, euh, cette organisation. Um, et uh, est-ce que la programmation a-t-elle changé au cours des années ou uh, a-t-elle évolué et, uh, ou a-t-il resté la même? Um, est-ce qu'il y a certains styles, certains uh, types d'artistes 
qu'il y a plusieurs maintenant ou, ou euh, oui ça c'est la question peut-être euh, je peux ouais. Ouais. mais moi je pense c'est sûr ça a évolué après est-ce que c'est -ce, est -ce pas resté la même chose mais euh, je pourrais pas pas te dire depuis 2002 là je suis pas assez euh au fait de, la, de tous les détails de la programmation de Sony pour te faire des comparaisons euh, incroyables. Mais je pense qu'il y a quand même il y a une continuité. Pareil. Nous, en musique, le côté musique contemporaine, il y a certains ensembles qui sont revenus souvent. Nous, on a fait cette, 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 cette co-création avec Peter, mais il y a eu d'autres groupes. Il y a eu euh, qu -ce que CC Innovation en concert qui a beaucoup fait de choses avec eux. Non, Banda, je pense. Euh, production Super Musique aussi. Puis après, dans les, dans les autres styles, je suis, je suis un peu moins au courant, mais je pense qu'il y avait à la fois une suite dans les idées puis des, des, des lignes assez fortes de programmation, mais il y a quand même toujours aussi une place pour la découverte. Et puis, ils ont ouvert aussi, je pense que c'était parti dans un certain noyau d'artistes, probablement, mais ça, ça s'est beaucoup ouvert au travers des années. Julie, en, toi qui as vraiment travaillé de plus près là, dans le bureau, tout ça, tu dois pouvoir répondre encore plus en détail que moi, mais disons, je, je, comme ça, je donnais mon expérience de, de l'extérieur vraiment, puis euh, oui. peut-être la tête de l'intérieur. Merci. Mais je trouve ça beau parce que je pense justement qu'en effet, il y a une loyauté qui est venue s'inscrire qui est très belle, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a des... Il y, a, ben, il y a des labels, il y a des artistes en particulier qui étaient là la première année et puis qu'on peut revoir encore aux deux ans. Ce sont des, des valeurs sûres, ce sont des, des, des monuments. Puis on a envie de les voir, euh, de, de les voir revenir parce que c'est au Canada peut-être euh, la seule opportunité qu'on aura d'être en, con, en, con, euh, en contact avec ces artistes-là. Il y a beaucoup de scènes qui sont là et qui reviennent constamment. Puis, mais à l'autre côté, comme disait Isabelle, il y a toujours des nouvelles alliances. Ces nouvelles alliances-là qui ne veulent, veulent pas ouvrir à, à des artistes et à des gens qui peut-être n'étaient pas en, en contact direct avec nous puis qui emmènent forcément euh, des nouveautés que nous, on n'aurait pas pu programmer, c'est clair. Puis aussi, ce que j'ai vu, c'est beaucoup... Euh, ben beaucoup. Il y a un certain nombre de ces spectacles-là. Il y a un conseil d'administration. Il y a des gens de l'extérieur qui se rajoutent, qui changent et puis qui amènent toujours des nouvelles visions. Donc, ça ne pourra jamais être un calque 2002, 2004, 2005. Puis, ce que j'ai vu, c'est quand même un effort d'être de, conscient des tendances de programmation, euh, des gens qui sont sous-programmés d'année en année, de se reposer des questions. Est-ce que, est que tout le monde a sa vitrine? Euh, je pense que ça fait partie aussi des, euh, des sensibilités de ce festival-là qui permet qu'on euh, qu pr qu prenne des chances à chaque année sur la programmation puis qu'on bouleverse un peu les tendances qu'on avait eues l'année d'avant. C'est ce que je dirais là-dessus. Oui, totalement. Ça a toujours été la question d'inclure aussi des des jeunes, des gens de la relève, d'inclure après on, la discussion des, des, euh, des genres ou des, ou des musiciens, des compositeurs qu'on voyait moins, etc., des, des femmes compositrices. Euh, on parle de là, il, y a, il y a 12 ans, c'était bon, toujours dans les sujets. Nous, on n'a jamais aimé ça dire, on, on fait un programme de, de compositrices. On trouve ça un peu ridicule et réducteur, mais euh, c'est sûr que ça, ça fait partie des discussions en arrière, scène en amont. OK, qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu veut faire? Puis bon, oui, on amène tel, on amène Christian Wolf, c'est une chose. Bon, cette année, c'était juste Christian Wolf, mais, mais beaucoup d'autres années, c'est OK, c'est qui, qui le pendant de la relève? C'est qui la, la fille qu'on trouve super intéressante, mais qui n'a pas, euh, pas encore eu sa chance, etc. Il y a comme plusieurs euh, discussions dans, dans ce... Bon, ça, c'est nos, nos discussions à nous, bien sûr, mais euh, je pense que c'était vrai dans, dans, avec, euh, avec les différents artistes, puis c'était l'approche, là, euh, Définitivement, les discussions qu'il y avait avec Peter Burton à l'époque, puis euh, avec Iva et Andrew cette année, c'était la même chose. Il y avait vraiment une, une ouverture puis des, des discussions très intéressantes. Merci beaucoup. Um, et oui, il y a, il y a beaucoup de, de choses de penser. C'était, uh, Julie, uh, vous avez uh, mentionné les, les tendances. Et puis, um, je, je, je crois que c'est prob probablement facile de... OK, cet artiste était... Ça, c'était une, 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 euh, une bonne show. Et puis, on va, faire, on va avoir le même artiste la prochaine année. Mais, mais euh, Swony, ça, ça toujours change, mais ça toujours reste la même dans, dans un sens. Euh, parce que 
ça ne, um, ça, ça ne prend pas les, les tendances, peut-être. C'est un balance, peut-être. Oui, ouais, je pense que c'est une super bonne balance parce que c'est comme le... Il y, a, il y a une continuité, mais ce n'est pas, pas répétitif, ce n'est pas, mm -hmm. pas se baser, ce n'est pas juste... Euh, bon, si on parle des valeurs sûres, sont là, sont importantes, mais ce n'est pas juste ça. Il y a toujours la place à, à l'innovation. Puis maintenant, euh, si on, si on va parler de 2022, si on nous poser cette question-là, j'imagine, c'est le... Il y a encore la continuité, je la sens avec Andrew, avec Kiva, puis en même temps, ça prend une autre couleur, ça s'en va ailleurs. Puis ça, c'est super. Tu sais, ça donne aussi une idée que, OK, ça, ça, ça ouvre d'autres portes et puis euh, ça reste, l'esprit où on y reste. Puis ça, c'est ce qui est, était ce qui était inquiétant. Je trouve avec la COVID, on se disait, bon, qu'est-ce qui va se passer? Ça ne ça, ça, ça se passera plus. La salle n'existera plus. La casa non plus. Est-ce que le festival va pouvoir mmh. revenir? Est-ce que... Euh, C'était des grosses questions. Et puis, euh, ça a été un, un, un morceau terrible à perdre pour... Euh, pour la musique au Canada, puis à Montréal en particulier. Puis là, je pense que, en tout cas, on, moi, je suis très heureuse de voir que ça a repris du poil de la bête cette année, puis euh, que euh, ça, sort, ça sort de la COVID euh, euh, honorablement et plus qu'honorablement avec, euh, avec une nouvelle énergie, puis euh, c'est beau à voir. Oui. Ah, Julie, vous avez quelque chose d'autre sur ça? Euh, non, je suis pas mal dans la même enthousiasme ouais. qu'Isabelle. Moi aussi, c'est sûr que j'ai eu un peu peur. Euh, puis, je pense qu'à quelque part, euh, comme, comme Isabelle disait, avec Andrew, avec Kiva, euh, même malgré le roulement des gens en programmation, il reste qu'il y a 20 années sur lesquelles se reposer puis desquelles s'inspirer. Rien euh, de, 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 de pouvoir s'asseoir sur l'expérience de son festival, de, de voir également que tu peux réinviter la même compagnie chaque année, eux vont également, parce que c'est des gens en musique créative, ne vont, vont pas te ramener du tout là où ils t'ont laissé il y a deux ans, ne vont pas du tout te ramener là où ils t'ont laissé l'an passé. Donc, reprendre des chances, ce n'est pas non plus de se dire « Ah, on a eu un immense succès avec quelque chose, on va le refaire l'année prochaine. » Ce n'est pas dans cette vision-là d'offrir de, de, quelque chose qui est sûr. Ce n'est pas versus la sécurité, c'est la compréhension à un moment donné qu'on va voir quelqu'un sous, sous nos yeux constamment se reshaper, se, se redéfinir. Puis je pense que c'est le fun également à offrir ça à un public. Mm. Merci. Um... Une autre, une autre question um, à, à propos de, de, de le style um, et le les genre. Uh, J'étais... Um, je, je pense, je pense à, à, à propos de, de la, 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 le monde de la musique contemporaine et puis Swony. Et je, 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 uh, je pensais que uh, uh, Swony avait un rapport uh, pas mal... Um, différents avec ce monde. Uh, il y a plusieurs festivals qui sont la, plus à propos de la musique contemporaine. Swony est aussi ça, mais c'est un peu différent pour moi. Alors, uh, est-ce que vous avez les... Uh, oui, uh, quelque chose à propos de le rapport entre Swony et, et ce monde de musique contemporaine? Ben, moi, je pense que c'est une chose, euh, encore là, une chose ultra positive que qu'un festival euh, soit capable d'avoir une vision élargie de la musique, son... Puis que ça ne soit pas qu'une une, une chapelle contemporaine, un festival spécialisé. C'est clair qu'ils sont allés chercher, euh, bon, après c'est venu par des intérêts, là, mais c est, c est, c est... souvent on a ça aussi, les gens viennent à, à la musique contemporaine, mais c'est parce qu'ils ont commencé par écouter euh, du, du hard, je ne sais pas quoi, puis là, oups, ça s'est transformé, puis ils sont, sont allés en, de, vers le free jazz, puis ah, oups, on, on découvre la musique expérimentale ou je ne sais pas quoi. Puis ça, c'est euh, ben, cool, mais c'est intéressant parce qu'on a joué pour des publics aussi où ce n'est euh, pas le public nécessairement d'un festival de musique contemporaine, c'est un public plus large, puis qui découvre aussi des choses, puis qui est plus intéressé. Mais bon, il ne programme pas non plus comme un festival de musique contemporaine. Les discussions, mm -hmm. d'abord, il y a une discussion avec les artistes ouvertes, parce que souvent dans un, un, un festival, c'est plus euh, le directeur artistique a une idée très spécifique et euh, c'est des, des commandes assez strictes. 
je trouve que la, 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 la discussion, l'ouverture de, de, la, de la gang de Sony, c'est autre chose, vraiment. Il y, a des, euh, ouais, c est, c est, il y a des chemins qui se croisent. Après, ce n'est pas tous les chemins qui se croisent. Puis il y, a, il y a certaines musiques qui doivent être jouées aussi, mais qui n'ont peut-être pas leur place non plus à Sony. Là, pas, on ne peut pas tout faire partout, mais oui. voilà. Je comme ça, je sais pas, Julie, tu as sûrement une autre vision de ce que moi là-dessus, mais... Non, mais ça se ressemble beaucoup. Écoute, je, évidemment, de toute façon, je pense que on voit bien que le, le festival offre une diversité énorme, que euh, il y a toujours eu, je pense, euh, une offre de musique contemporaine dans ce festival-là. Euh, je sais pas si c'est... Seulement ce sur quoi moi je me suis arrêtée, mais je me disais, ah, c'est super intéressant parce qu'on y va également. Ça permet d'encourager des artistes locaux et aussi. Euh, puis de voir euh, que, ben, à l'intérieur, dans cette communauté-là, elle est très vivante, la musique contemporaine. Si je regarde beaucoup d'alliés du festival, euh, c'est des gens qui sont grandement investis euh, dans, dans ces musiques-là. Puis, en tout cas, moi, à la base, je n'ai jamais pensé que j'avais une affinité si grande envers euh, cette musique-là. Et puis, j'ai compris le contraire. J'ai compris le contraire. Puis, euh, il y a beaucoup, en tout cas, je ne sais pas si je me trompe, a, ça rayonne beaucoup, ça répond. Euh, les gens y sont. Puis, comme disait Isabelle, ce n'est pas forcément la même, c'est pas la même scène que tu vas retrouver ailleurs. Ce n'est pas le public attendu. Puis ça, c est, c est, ça vaut vraiment la peine de miser là-dessus. Moi, c'est dans des... Visuellement, quand je regarde les gens qui sont assis dans la salle, ça me donne une joie terrible. C'est énorme. Je suis toujours surprise. J'ai vu des enfants assis là. J'ai même eu une expérience où ma fille était assise dans un... Um, C'était peut-être le poitou Bodini, mais moi, je devais partir. Ma fille était assise et à huit ans, elle ne voulait rien savoir de s'en aller. Je n'ai jamais été capable de l'enlever de là. C'est bizarre. Je ne l'aurais pas emmené là. Je ne savais pas. T'sais. Donc, euh, je trouve ça le fun parce que le public qui suit est intéressé. Euh, même si tu mets dans les catégories euh, musique contemporaine ou euh, euh, avant folk, euh, slash punk. Euh, les gens ne regardent pas tant que ça. Tu sais, on prend tout le temps des chances. Euh, moi, je sais qu'avant d'être investi là-bas, j'achetais six billets par année, puis j'y allais carrément avec une roulette magique. Je, ça m'intéressait à peine de lire. Je voulais, je voulais aller voir, je prenais des chances parce que j'ai confiance en la programmation. C'est une espèce de confiance. Je, je sais que je ne serai pas déçue. Il y aura de quoi, il y aura de quoi à, à sortir de bon de cette expérience-là. Donc, oui, je ne sais pas pourquoi, moi, cette, euh, cette, cette coquille, euh, à... voyons, la trans... mes traductions s'en vont en trois langues, mais pas en français. Euh, et, il fait tout plein de sens pour moi, cette, euh, cette union-là entre la musique contemporaine et puis euh, le Swanny Perel Popolo. Puis comme j'ai dit, ben, on ne peut pas mettre de côté le fait que localement, ben, on est situé à côté d'alliés qui, qui y sont. C'est peut-être ça le secret, comme Isabelle. Oui, ça, ça doit faire partie. Puis c'est le. Mais c'est il y a comme il y a toute une ambiance et le lieu aussi, on sent, il y a comme un, il y a comme un côté. Euh, euh, on sait que ça va être cool, on, on sait que ça va être relax, on, on, on est bien quand on est là, les salles sont sympathiques, c'est euh, il y a de l'ouverture. Fait que ça fait que euh, oui, on. on le, ça, c'est un des grands succès de Sony, je pense, c'est de, ben, de Sony, pas de Sony, mais même de toute la, toute la, toute la construction Sony Casa, la Sala, puis euh, les autres salles satellites autour, puis les, les ateliers, etc. C'est d'avoir euh, créé vraiment une ambiance, puis une communauté qui, euh, qui, qui va plus loin encore que, que, que les programmations, puis qui fait qu'on on sent confiance, comme dit Julie, on aime ça, euh, on sait qu'on va avoir une bonne soirée. Euh, que si on aime moins ça, c'est pas grave, on va avoir rencontré des gens intéressants, puis pris une bière, puis, tu sais, ça, ils ont vraiment réussi, ce, ce tour de force-là, qui fait que, dans, tu, peux, tu peux programmer la même affaire, mais ailleurs, dans une petite salle à Montréal, puis ça lèvera pas, puis c'est pas, c'est vraiment aussi, euh, c'est de savoir combiner la programmation euh, et... Euh, et l'ambiance et, et, et la communauté autour. Et puis, c'est toutes des discussions qui sont, euh, ben, 
qu'on a beaucoup, je dirais, peut-être depuis cinq ans, mais que Sony fait depuis 20 ans. C est, c est, c est, c est, je pense que c'est vraiment dans l'ADN. C'était là à, avant la lettre, avant toutes les discussions d'inclusivité. Sony était dans, dans ce mode-là à fond. Merci beaucoup. Um... Yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot to, to think about there. Uh, one thing that uh, that uh, you mentioned, I think Julie, I think you, Isabelle, you both mentioned it a bit, is like this sort of this trust with the audience, um, where you know they um, where it's not so specifically contemporary music. It's not it's not so specifically here's the program. They better do it. <laughs> they better meet my expectations. It's it's kind of the reverse. It's sort of coming in with that openness, um, just for, uh, with that presentness um, as an audience and then having experience. And then afterward, you, maybe you, you think about your expectations. You know, um, th this is something I was just speaking with Carmen Braden and Robert Uchida, who put together uh, a, a festival up in Whitehorse, Northwest Territories. And this was also their approach to um, just having all, just cr letting all of these style sort of gently cross paths for as wide of an audience as we can. Um, anyway, I, I love b both your thoughts on that. Um, one more uh, kind of recent thing um, is this idea of live streaming uh, the performances. I've noticed that it seems to me, <laughs> um, uh, I noticed that, um, yeah, if not most, if not all of Swoney's um, performances this year were live streamed. I saw some from last year as well. Um, I was wondering if if either of you knew how long this has been going on for. Um, is this to do with COVID or is this a kind of a documentation that had already been going? And then one other question, just as, as musicians and 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 programmers and and, um, and artists. Uh, how do you feel about live streaming added on to the performance experience, and and how do you how does that impact um, this, the events that you're trying to put together? That's many questions in one. <laughs> let's start with let's start with. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I, yeah, but uh, okay, I mean, cool. it, we, we can exchange and, and go back and forth again on sure, it. Sure. Yeah. Take your time. I yeah. think you know. Well, filming concerts and you know archiving concerts or using it we've been doing that for years but Tini has been doing that for years and so I think we did it at Swoney and there was usually a discussion okay shall we film this thing or shall we have also how it was going to be the presentation but it wasn't live streaming I believe I don't I don't know for sure but I don't think it the live streaming was happening before COVID but Swoney right away like it was the discussion went very quickly before anything could open in 2020 they wanted to absolutely still do the festival in June but it was going to be, and, and, and there was quite a quite a, a way of organizing it and having, you know, the, the saxophonist playing with, with uh, ridos all around them and, and, and things like that and solos. And then the quartet, we played a concert, but it was just us with the, with the technicians and and that was live stream. And in a way, I mean, I, I prefer live stream to, a, you know, to just doing captation and, and then it's uh, full live, whatever it's called. But uh I, I'm, I'm ambiguous about it. I think it was very important to develop this and in a way COVID sort of forced us to, to push it. But right now I'm not sure, I, especially Sony. For me, Sony is really is really a feeling, it's an ambiance. And then online, I think it's, it's still important because there are people who are further away, who don't have access to it, who of course are happy to have access to it if, if it's going to be on. But um, I think it's also... Well, for the artists, because you, you you do your program, you actually want to play it 10 times or 15 times, hopefully, or at least part of it. And if it's online, then, then you know, who, which other festival will, will buy it? Just just if you go with this logic, uh, it's, it, it can be a problem. It can become a problem. And the other problem is, of course, that it's it's way more costly than, than just doing the show. So, you know, can we... Can we do uh, streaming, live streaming of everything? And some halls, I've, I've done it, some organizations have done it and I've gotten the equipment. But I think that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a catch 22, if I can say it's a, it's, it's lovely. And it's, it's really good to actually have those archives and, and to, to be able to put them on. But I think there's too much material at the moment. And it's, it's also too costly. So it doesn't, 
for the economy of, of what is music and for the fact that music should, you know, I, I believe very strongly in live music and in the communication with the public. Then I think we have to really be careful in how we're going to use that in the next few years after now this, this first wave of that's the only thing we can do. And mm -hmm. then it becomes important to do it. And then there's a the whole digital discussion and, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is being digital and, 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 and so on. But I think it's a yeah, it's a fine it's a fine thread, a fine balance to to explore. So I think it's it's not going to just disappear. I mean, it, you know, some people have gotten used to it. Their, their equipments are there. It, it doesn't make sense to just go back because, uh, well, COVID isn't finished. But eventually, hopefully, it will be. But you know, what's what's going to be the yeah? I don't know. To me, it's a, it's a complicated question. I I find it uh, puzzling still. I'm still brooding over it, I think. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Julie? Uh, just sharing a lot of thought, uh, uh, similar to Isabel, but what, uh, what I would say is like, yeah, it definitely it, it got started. It was totally linked to COVID. I don't think it was in their mind to do such a thing. It's, it's been a really quick reaction to assure that they can keep programming and of be there also for artists to be able to offer an opportunity to still uh, work, meet with other musicians, stay creative, keep reaching out for your public and find a reason to wake up in the morning. And I think they've achieved that really well. In terms of archives, I believe that since day one of maybe 2002, as you were saying, there's always been the archival, everything has been recording. Uh, I mean, if artists wanted to, they could have a recording. There's like the postering archivals, like all sort of archives. They've always made a good job to uh, keep the traces of what they were doing. And I don't know if they will ever do something with those like, tons and tons of uh, recording that they're having. But right now, I think it was a really specific um, issue they had to confront. Now they probably have to have another uh, start thinking again. It's really expensive to keep doing this, maintaining this, but they have all the gear uh, and they have the staff and they've put something into place. So I really don't know what's gonna happen of that aspect, uh, but it definitely was um, a very sensitive thing to offer for so many of, uh, uh, so many people are suffering with like immune system diseases that can't really come and join us during a festival and the fact that they could assist I think wow that was a good thing to do you know they they deserve to be served the same kind of uh, goodness that we could have while we were there as an artist though uh, personally I, I'm like 50 50. Uh, somehow I wasn't excited about recording and having to present those kind of um, shows with all that offer. Everybody came with an offer. There was so much going on. You needed to overthink like, what am I going to do to be special? I can't just offer a static show. I cannot do this. I need to add that, that, that. So I feel like. I've only done one presentation and I put so much more attention to the visual aspect that I would, that I put to the music. It's, it's really funny at the end. I want to laugh when I think about that, you know, I was so concerned with how is it going to appear? How am I going to stand out, you know? So, and also the idea that if I present my show, just like Isabel was saying, like, what's the point of inviting me to your festival later. So I had to come up with a specific presentation for exactly that presentation that day. Uh, I didn't want to present the rest of the stuff I was working on because I didn't want it to go out in the public so quick. Uh, I, I, I want to run my ideas through like smaller crews first. So it was, uh, it's, I really don't know, but somehow it gave me the opportunity to be out there making music, experimenting, uh, keep in touch with my you know with the musician and the artist that I'm working with uh, also uh, 
<clears throat> just to stay alive uh, and mentally sane, it, it helped a lot, I would say. But then again, I, I don't know, you know, there's nothing that will beat the idea that if you're sitting and smelling and breathing the same air as the people performing in front of you, I think it's something totally different. And it, uh, it, it keeps us, you know, and it keeps the movement coming. We need that. We can't just go aesthetic uh, forever, waiting for something to go, like the danger to be passed. Uh, um, I don't know. I just don't think it feeds us the same way. That's, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people can identify with that. You know, it, I think it's almost you can over it's easy to overlook just how much uh turning something into a live stream event can be feel like having to build it up from sort of you know square one again um just in terms of presentation in terms of how the audience is receiving it but uh yeah um great we've maybe got time for just about one or two more questions here um isabella i just wanted to ask you about uh working with christian wolf um in the most recent program just wondering about uh, how the how that workshop and concert were were received? Um, maybe also, you know, this is a, this is a figure from you know classical contemporary music, and just wondering if you had any thoughts on um, how he fits into what what Cini is doing, to what Swony is doing, um, to any degree. Yeah, Christian Wolf. I mean, he's a um, he's a company he does through the years. I have to say, it's it's somebody. It's a figure that we were always rather fascinated with. Uh, Clemens knew him from from before Bazzini Quartet, and we we met him our very first season of concerts in Montreal. We were looking. We wanted to do a. It was a, a, a commission and uh, another older uh, Canadian composer in the program and somebody from the New York school and Charles Ives Quartets. We had a very strict three, co three concert program. And right away we looked, of course, we, we played uh, Feldman, we played Cage and we were looking into Wolf and we realized that he had, a, he had one string quartet. Well, no, yet actually three at the time already, but two were very experimental. Um, uh, uh, like one is called lines and it's actually a little bit impossible we discussed it with him and he says yeah I made a mistake <laughs> it was quite funny with him it's but anyways he had written this this one piece exercise exercises out of songs and that had never been premiered he had written it for the Concord Quartet in the, the early 70s I believe and one movement was played in a university context and the, the piece wasn't premiered so so we premiered it in Montreal in 2001 so that's somehow where it started and he's been writing quartets for us over the years he wrote one for Metz Music Festival in Berlin in 2009 and more recently for Ostrava days when was that I think 2018 or 19 I'm not sure we also wrote another a third quartet and now we wrote another one for for Swony. so it's a for us it's a it's really a long uh, term relationship where we were discussing with this with this uh, composer and he he's a very interesting figure I, I find because he has everything from from um, graphic and purely text scores to like really written more classical uh, but it's never totally classical there's always a twist somewhere and he's always challenging you and there's this whole social aspect in his music also where he's always I mean there's you know, exercises out of songs was even political songs. So then he was trying to, there's a, a, this old 70s where uh, he was more of a, of a political composer, if you can say so. And then I think there's also a question when you realize, well, you know, music is not, is not politics and, and, and you have to, you can, you can make statements in, in another way, but, but he always challenges the, the social relationships between performers. And if it's, you know, established performers or, or or young artists or even amateurs yet or you know sometimes you can even search some of his pieces you can work them with with artists who are not necessarily musicians or, or definitely with with amateur musicians because it's it's a lot about how you establish an idea how you how you work together how you listen how you're able to to connect and create something and it's not it's often not I mean, you know, some of it is, is really notes and then you have to just control your instrument obviously but uh, there's there's just many many aspects he's challenging many different things in his music and I, I've been finding it a, a, a good things and he's you know 
for him doing workshops with, with young performers was has been a, of course something he's done a lot and, and that's also something we we like to do so that was just a great thing to to be able to put on that workshop and the concert i mean i i came to the concert i didn't i mean you, I, you probably don't know why I, I broke uh, my leg in in may so i actually wasn't playing that performing in that concert because of that uh, because the the doctor said two months of rest and i was like what yeah. <laughs> but uh anyway so so yeah yeah but it's okay then then you know we we reprogrammed a little bit and then emily girard charest uh, jumped in to stepped in to play the the new piece for quartet and ensemble and uh and then there was the you know my colleagues played duos and and there was christian played himself and then he did a duo with martin arnold and uh i don't know if you if you've heard it it's it is on sony radio uh I, I like that concert quite quite a lot. I mean, for me, it's a it's very special to have Christian Wolf, and you know, we we brought him in 2013, and he was playing with the Van der Weizers, and it was great. But uh, this time to have him with a new piece for us, it was also very special. And and then him performing is is amazing. He's and he's in great shape for being. I don't know, what is he's 87, 88? He's he's a yeah. He's been around, but uh, and he has mm-hmm. stories. It's it's amazing. That's wonderful. Sounds like, yeah, sounds like a great, great experience and working relationship. Um, and maybe just one more question. Maybe we'll have time for two more, but I'd like to just go back to Julie. Um, I was looking through your work a bit as a composer, as an artist, and I came across your, your Black Ark project where you're um, taking fragments uh, of, marginal, of marginalized works of classical music produced by African-American women um from the past and then you're creating compositions out of them um of course this is separate from your your work with with swoney but um i'm especially with the work i've been doing with the clc i'm really interested in composers and how composers are always doing other things as well and how the artistic process or how the things relate um when i was looking through uh you, the write-up of your of your music it said it mentioned uh, that you were finding, updating, and recognizing, uh, and I thought that those three words could also apply to programming. Um, so I was wondering. My question is, when you're thinking about programming, you're 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 selecting, you're creating uh, performance experiences, selecting artists. Do you see this as is it a similar artistic process as composing music, um, or are they very different hats uh, for you? No, I, I think I'm um, personally a really coherent person. And my main thing is to recognize that uh, musical geniuses don't look exactly what, what like, you know, uh, don't fit in that image that we have of it. And I'm trying to pay enorm- an enorm amount of attention to make sure that we are not overseeing some talent somewhere because it just doesn't look like the way it should and like what you're expecting. And I think it would be a total denial of my own personal experience if I wasn't programming that way, envisioning that way, promoting certain things, you know, because I think um, we are in a time of I'm not sure I'll have the right words in English, ma'am. Um, we need to change that story. We need to make it straight. And I think it should read through your programming that you're aware that some wrongs have been done and that you're really sensitive to the fact that you could oversee creativity and um, knowing our biases will help us programming in a much more, in a better way, in a more intelligent way, in a more sensitive way. It makes a lot of sense. And I believe it's not because I'm, it's nothing I'm doing, it's just my own experience. Uh, and I believe there, like, it's it's really good that when you're putting together a programming committee, you're going for different experiences that will help you create something that is respectful and extremely avant-garde and extremely, you know, um, we need to be all together to make sure that we're eliminating as much mistakes and biases as we can and try to make it right, you know, and it ne- it's never at the cost of quality. 
it's never at the cost of quality and yeah so I'm, I'm trying to be aware and also you know it's it's good if we can uh sometimes people have stopped creating and because there wasn't a space for them back then let's say like 30 years ago somebody was like on something fantastic and magical and i think it is your responsibility to go out and reach out and see how you could build a bridge for them to you know finish or I, I don't know. I think we, we need to help. And also it will help the future generations to see we need to rebuild those links. There's missing links in the art on that territory and other territories. There are missing links. And I think it's also a part of the programming responsibilities to be aware and to try to dig a little more. Um, and it makes it interesting also, because I think we're like really curious people and we need some sort of challenge, you know, I'm going to try to make sure I i didn't overlook this and this and this and this and that, you know, uh, it just makes it a little more complex, but oh, much more fun. Wonderful. Did I answer at all? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's I think it's a great uh, way of... Yeah, I find this interesting that it's... Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. But... Uh, um... This, Julie just inspired me to say that that it's a, it's sort of just a natural development also of 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 where Sony has been has been going. It's it's great and it's absolutely important that we become aware and we all, who, who am I to say this in many ways? But I'm I'm really excited and and uh, grateful that there's this this idea of okay we're we're really going somewhere else and we have been missing corners and you know for example some of the program we've done, I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's all wild guys, but it's actually people who have, had not been programmed or not much or not in Montreal for sure. Anyways, I've been, I mean, Christian Wolf is a, is a famous figure, but when we did it in 20 and in 2001, many composers here in Montreal didn't know him. And it was quite weird for us. We're like, Oh, but you know, it's, it's so, I think there's, there's a, there's those gaps and, and then there's, there's a young people, there's the women that have been uh, underrepresented. And now we're talking about, uh, uh, yeah, obviously, people of color and and uh, uh, our own First Nations and everything, and it, and it's great that we are able to to open those doors. And I think that Sony is is really a very, a very very good place there because there's a lot of openness and there's a lot of amazing people such as Judy who have been around for a long time, who know what they're doing, and who know about programming and who are somehow ready and and finally hopefully also and then and, and not hopefully but um, uh positively been 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 given a, also a space for it and I, I think it's great anyways if that, if that makes any sense yeah yeah very much um great i think we should we should maybe wrap up i just want to give an opportunity maybe for sort of a a final kind of remark just about about swony maybe um what do you quick quick last little question to wrap up you know what? What do you see in Swoney Perilla Popolo's future uh, next year round, or what are some things that you're looking forward to there? Maybe I'll just go back to Julie for a second, and then Isabel. Uh, so what I'm hoping for, I guess, not because I don't have much clue of what's going to happen, but um, I'd like to see more offsite, 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 out of the neighborhood action. Uh, I'm, I would be surprised if none of that happens, but I think like uh, we understand that there are people that we need to go uh, reach out and make a little more of an effort, maybe uh, more healthcare facilities like um, geriatric uh, hospitals, uh, things like that. I think uh, this is where we are expected to be. I hope uh, it's going to happen there. Uh, what's happening in those three uh, venues is super exciting, but I think it's time to go uh, maybe in neighborhoods that we haven't. Maybe what about Saint-Michel, Park Extension, uh, Côte des Neiges? Uh, I don't think things have happened there. And also out of Montreal. I know they've done it this year uh, in, Ontario, in Wakefield, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to double check, but they what a good idea to bring people out of the out of Montreal, you know? Absolutely, uh, yeah. You know, 
and, and it brings to the experience to be out in nature and there's so much uh, different type of programming you could do there like different type of activism i know that this year they involve seedlings uh, i mean they went real far so i think with the experience of last year this year should be a uh, even more uh, spread around. Awesome. Different communities. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Isabel? Yeah, I agree with this. It's the, this, I'd say it's the new color of, of Sony. It's a Kiva bringing this, this energy and, and Andrew a different experience. And I think it's, um, I also think that the whole COVID story between the COVID, between a, 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 raised awareness of, of inclusivity and, and, and how we, we want to work with, with each other and, and you know, bring uh, different programming as well and different places and different audiences and, and how do you address to, to them. And I think that's things that after the pandemic are, are becoming much more obvious. It's, it jumped in our face. We always knew there always were initiatives. I think I think Sony always did also already community initiatives everywhere, but we always can do more in that sense that I think it's, I mean, you have to be within reason, but um, yeah, I see this and I, and I think it's a very positive uh, development. And I, I, I also uh, expect that it's going to go on in the, in the next few years in a very good manner, developing the audience elsewhere. Wonderful. Great. Well, uh, look forward, look forward to it. Um, and thank you both again so much for your, uh, for your time and your, and your, and your thoughts. Um, I'm going to hit stop now. So it's going to send the recording to the cloud.